Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is a honeybee. Uh, many of you know that. <laughs> uh, th there's a clicker here. Great. Um, Aphis mellifera, a species of honeybee. Uh, my perspective uh, on the plight of the honeybee is, is, is different than, than some. I'm a second generation beekeeper. I consider this slide my resume slide. Um, that is my mother, my oldest brother standing, and I'm the one laying down. So people, a people do ask me, how long have you been beekeeping? And I can truthfully say, I've been doing it my entire life. I don't do it as a day job, but I've been doing it my entire life. Um, I am not an institutional academic. I am not a research scientist. Uh, but I have a practical and applied basis or approach to honeybees. Um, our family mission is, is to care for the health and well-being of honeybees. Forty years ago, my father, the self-proclaimed flower chaser, began our family journey in beekeeping. But like other beekeepers in the 21st century, we endure our share of colony losses each year. And through diligence and great expense, we and our honeybees managed to survive. My, my industry is fortunate that the media over the last 10 years have brought colony collapse disorder, or CCD, to the mainstream. I mean, you have heard of this. It is, a, it is a, an amalgamation or a, or a conglomerate of many different issues and diseases that bees, bees die from. We have mite infestation. We have bacterial infection. We have pesticides, miticides. This list is very long. Uh, non-existence foraging grounds for nectar and pollen, and many other known and presumably unknown pathogens and environmental factors. To me, colony collapse disorder is less about why the bees are dying. We deal with that every day. To me, colony collapse disorder is more about the fact that the bees are in fact dying. And I'm not here today to talk about the doom and gloom of honeybees. I'm actually here to offer a solution. Um, beekeepers report 30 to 80 percent of colony loss each year. That's not honeybees, that's actually the entire colony. That number is alarming to me. It's devastating to our industry, and I think it should be of grave concern to you. It is reported, I'm gonna give you a couple facts here, it is reported that approximately eight million honeybee colonies, and again, that's not honeybees, that's the actual beehive. Eight million honeybee colony, colonies existed around the turn of the last century. That's in the 1900s. Approximately six million colonies existed in 1940, and today, an astounding two million colonies exist. That's six million colonies lost and not replaced in one century. Some of you may have noticed that, that honeybees are not existent in nature, or uh, feral honeybees are not existent in nature. Or more importantly, maybe some of you haven't noticed. But I'm here to say, listen up, that no wild honeybees exist today, leaving many areas of the country simply without honeybees. Habitats once suited for a swarm or hive are now abandoned and vacant of honeybees. This was once a flourishing hive. Um, it may have been a swarm, may have been created by a swarm, uh, but now, as you can see, it's, it's long been abandoned. Without beekeepers and their diligent efforts, no honeybees would exist. I'm going to talk to you about why, why bees are important. We all know that, well, at least within our family, we know. Honey, honeybees are cerebral insects uh, with a complex social structure, communication abilities that are very sophisticated. In fact, they can communicate a specific floral source several miles away. Invariably, when I say this, somebody will say, well, if, that's, if they're so smart, why are they always drowning in my pool? I can only say they're insects, they're not mammals. The, the importance of honeybees to us humans goes far beyond our enjoyment of their honey, sheer fascination, or mere tolerance of their existence. But it's actually one of absolute necessity. Human survival depends on pollination of efforts of honeybees. It is said that one in three mouthfuls of food we eat is directly related to their pollination efforts. Now, there are many varying diets, but that's, that's what's reported. Um, moreover, not just commercial pollination uh, benefits. There's diverse ecosystems flourish with the presence of honeybees. They pollinate ground cover and providing food sources. I even argue that native pollinators and native species of flora and fauna benefit from the existence of honeybees. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that I do not believe that commercial beekeepers are the solution. 
Uh, we simply need more beekeepers. Due to the changing environment and ecosystem parameters, it is too large of a task to ask us as commercial beekeepers to increase the colonies to what they were at the turn of the last century. It quite simply will not happen. Urban sprawl, legal restrictions, changes in crop production, and limited food sources drastically limit foraging areas and create hostile environments for honeybees. To get honeybee colonies to the turn of the last century numbers, we need approximately six million more honeybee colonies. That's an overwhelming number. The, the commercial beekeepers, like us, and those that are able, will breed queens and shake packages for dispersal of, uh, to other commercial beekeepers to recoup the losses of the previous year. Under this construct, however, uh, at best, this, is, this results in diminishing status quo. I opine that in reality, we're seeing this strategy of only making up previous year dead outs equates to a steady decline of honeybee colonies over time while, while human populations and need for food increases. We were approached in the late 1990s by some gardeners who, who were having some issues with their backyard. They simply weren't being pollinated. They had noticed honeybees uh, for many, many years, and then they noticed that the bees were gone. They also noticed a correlation between the loss of honeybees and the productivity of the garden fruits and vegetables, but also the quality of the taste. And they came to us as, as informed gardeners and said, we would like to bring honeybees into our, into our own gardens. And we thought that was a pretty novel idea, actually. So I set out, I was in college at the time, and I set out with one of my roommates and my friends in my basement. You know, all good stories start in college basements, right? <laughs> we decided to create a telescoping cardboard box for the use of shipping or providing small amounts of honeybees into people's backyards. And I was very proud of that idea. It was, it was a great achievement for us. But quite frankly and candidly, I didn't, I didn't market the idea on any appreciable scale. We didn't do a whole lot with it. I was hoping and I was overly optimistic that through academic research, through commercial beekeepers like us, or the honeybees themselves would resolve their own demise. Unfortunately, well, now 15 years later, we simply don't see a, an explanation for their deaths other than theories um, or a solution to the problem. As queen breeders, we raise honeybee queens for distribution, as I stated, to other beekeepers for making up their dead outs from the previous year. These are our queen bee nukes. I actually brought one today. Uh, and, and within this, in this nuke is, is a, a couple frames. They're removable. We put uh, uh, what we call a scoop of honeybees into them, approximately a quarter of a pound of honeybees. And then we introduce a cell, a, an, a, an, um, a, a queen cell that, where the queen has not emerged yet. So we introduce that cell into this, into this hive. And that, that queen will emerge. And she'll go fly and mate. And she'll come back as a laying queen. We, we then take that queen, we catch it, and we get orders from all over the country dispersing the genetic strain we're, we're trying to get in our own honeybee colonies and trying to, trying to diversi diversify not only the genetic species, but also to try to disperse honeybees back to those areas where they actually had those 30 to 80% die out. So what we did rather than my telescoping cardboard box is we were looking at repurposing that styrofoam container by putting it into people's backyards. Uh, this, is not, this is actually only a temporary solution, but we, we got a good response from some gardeners. Uh, they said that they, they enjoyed the increased productivity of their fruits and vegetables, as well as, as uh, the ground cover and wildflowers around their area. You can see it's just simply stra strapped into an, an orange tree. Some, some even tell us that once, once the bees have gone, and and these, these aren't gone. But once the bees are gone, they'll actually create honey, uh, honeycomb within, within the nuke itself. And they can actually harvest the honey. The problem here is that this is only a temporary solution. Like some of our own hives and the swarms, the honeybees within the nuke do not survive and must be replaced each year. We are hopeful, we are optimistic that, that the bees in, contained within these nukes will actually swarm. They'll actually go to the trees and try to create their own colonies. And we, that's, our, that's our hope. But we're seeing from, from the pathogens and things that I talked about before, colony collapse disorder, we're seeing that once they go to the trees, they're not surviving. And that, that is a big issue. The repurposed nuke that I'm showing you here is not the ideal habitat for honeybees. Uh, they soon grow, grow out of the tiny accommodations 
and without human input, they succumb to the many health and environmental factors of which they are susceptible. So again, I will say, we need more beekeepers. We need people like you, concerned eaters, backyard gardeners, educators, urban beekeepers, rooftop gardeners, small farmers. We need you to become interested and knowledgeable, and more importantly, contributors to the honeybee repopulation solution. My college friend who helped me devise our first garden pollination box, he was not a beekeeper, he was an engineer. But through his help and his skills, we devised and implemented a solution. It may have been a temporary solution, but with his input, someone that isn't a beekeeper, where we're exposing more of a population to the issue that commercial beekeepers are not the solution, we can get that outside input. I am optimistic that with the efforts of many beekeepers, we can create the environment where outside the box solutions can be suggested and implemented. I say ask your local beekeeper for honeybees, for assistance in starting your own beehives. Join your local beekeeping association, or if one does not exist, start one. That's easy for me to say. As you can see, I started at a very young age. I am not frightened of honeybees. When I get stung, it hurts just like it does to you. I know this is a lot to ask, to actually get involved. Uh, one of the issues that we see is that colony collapse disorder, although it's in the mainstream, it, it, it has not been presented as an issue for all of us, not just for commercial beekeepers. And I'm here to say, as a, as a second generation beekeeper, we simply are not the overall solution. We need more bee friendly cities. We can look to Boston uh, and New York as incredible examples of urban beekeepers and honeybees flourishing within urban areas. Contact your lo local municipality for any laws restricting honeybee hives within the city limits. I am very proud to call Chico my hometown. However, there is a law currently in place which restricts honeybee hives within the city limits. And based on land restrictions, um, it actually makes the existence of them illegal. If such laws exist, and I'm actually speaking to Chico here, but if outside of this area, if laws exist in your area, try, try to propose a change. I know that I am here locally. Again, my opinion is that commercial beekeepers are not the only solution. But that, not, that does not uh, limit us or allow us to hide, hide out and not, and not try to contribute. We can be major sources of honeybees. We can be a resource from an education standpoint. Uh, we can help contribute to the honeybee repopulation solution. Again, the plight of the honeybee and the devasta devastating consequences, I believe, is all of ours. It's not just us as commercial beekeepers. It's not just the problem of my family or other commercial beekeepers, but it's actually all of ours. Thank you.